Long before the chip ban started, Beijing had drafted a roadmap known as Made in China 2025. The core idea was simple. China wanted to stop being the world's factory for cheap plastic goods and start being the world's architect for high-tech innovation. For years, critics dismissed this as ambitious rhetoric. But when the chip sanctions hit, Made in China 2025 stopped being a slogan and became a survival manual. The Chinese government views AI as the electricity of the 21st century. It is the foundation of their military modernization, their surveillance infrastructure, and their economic growth. If the U.S. controls the chips, the U.S. controls the switch. This created a national security imperative. The logic goes like this. If you are building a nuclear power plant, you don't use software that a foreign adversary can update remotely. Similarly, if you are building the AI that will run your national power grid, your financial markets, and your defense systems, you cannot run it on hardware that requires a license from the Pentagon to purchase. This triggered a massive mobilization of state capital. We are talking about government-backed guidance funds pouring hundreds of billions of yuan into the semiconductor sector. The message to companies like Huawei, Alibaba, and Baidu changed. It was no longer make the most profit. It became secure the supply chain. This effectively killed the globalist approach to tech in China. The goal is now technological decoupling. They are actively embracing the split. They want to create a localized loop where the chip is designed in Shanghai, manufactured in Beijing, and installed in a server in Guizhou, without a single piece of American intellectual property touching the process. It sounds like a perfect plan on paper, but strategy doesn't process data. Silicon does. And for this plan to work, China needed a champion, a company that had already survived a US attempt to destroy it. 